and welcome everyone. In our previous session, we saw that we had this reference frame and this part was to sit inside this reference frame and it has to clear this pin. And then we decided this square tolerance zone. Let us say that the hole is offset in the diagonal direction, then it won't fit into the assembly. So now we will remove this square tolerance zone and apply a feature control frame. So instead of defining plus and minus tolerance on these dimensions, what I will do is I will keep these dimensions as basic dimensions and I will create a box around them. That means that these dimensions are basic dimensions and during manufacturing there will be no defect in these dimensions. Now you will say that this is not possible. During manufacturing obviously there will be some defect and this hole will not come at exactly 50 mm from this dimensions. This hole can be off and this can be made here, this can be drilled here, this can be drilled here. And we need to define some tolerance on what place this hole will be drilled. So instead of defining plus and minus tolerancing on these dimensions, what I will do is I will create a feature control frame for this hole. I will define the position of this hole rather than defining tolerance on these dimensions. So I will come here and say that this hole, I will create a feature control frame and say that this hole has to be positioned and the symbol for position is this. This hole has to be positioned within a diametrical zone of 5 mm. So rather than a square tolerance zone, I will define a diametrical tolerance zone of 5 mm with respect to, now we need to define some datums that how will this block be assembled into this assembly here. So if I see the right side view of this block, I will say that first of all, this face has to be aligned on, into the reference frame. So I will say that this, this is our datum A and I will say that this is my datum B and at last I will say that this is my datum C here and I will put these datums here A, B and C that means that this hole can be now positioned with respect to 5 mm diametrical zone with respect to datum A, B and C. Now keep in mind the order of these if you change the order then our assembly will deviate and, and I will show you how. So now what does this mean is so this is our datum A of the back face. This is our datum B and this is our datum C. Now the order is very important. When I say datum A first, that means that this part has to be aligned with this face into the reference frame. When I say datum B, that means now this face has to be aligned in, into the reference frame and then the datum C here. And now we will check that the part is clearing this pin. Now first of all we will remove this square tolerance zone and put a circular tolerance zone. So now this is our tolerance zone and, and if the center of the hole lies within this tolerance zone then it will always clear the pin. Let's recheck it once again. If I move the, this hole anywhere between this tolerance zone it will always clear the pin. Now before moving ahead let us discuss what is MMC and LMC. Suppose this is a rectangular box here and I have a hole of 15 mm diameter and suppose I have another rectangular box and in this case I have a diameter of let's say 40 mm. Now in this the hole is small that means we have more area here that is we have more material in this, in this part and when the hole is bigger we have less material in the part. So this is what LMC and MMC is in layman's term. When a hole is smaller, this condition is known as maximum material condition. And when our hole is bigger, then we have less material on the part and this situation is known as least material condition. Now we will see how this MMC and LMC can be applied to our original part. So this was our part here and we had a hole of 15 mm. Now it is not necessary that this hole will come exactly 15 mm in diameter. Sometimes the drill bit is not aligned properly or if this is a sheet metal part the punch is not aligned at the exact location. Let us say this is our drill bit and this axis won't be exact in the center. Let us say the axis is a little bit misaligned into the drill bit. Now the drill bit will move in this direction and the Although the diameter of the drill bit is 15 mm, it will create a hole of let's say more than 15 mm, let's say 18 mm. Since the axis is not aligned properly with the drill bit axis. It is not necessary that this hole will also come as 15 mm exactly. 
let us say that this hole can go maximum up to 18 mm. Now this is our maximum material condition and this is our least material condition. Now how do we apply these conditions into the feature control frame? So when our hole was 15 mm, we had a tolerance zone of 5 mm. When we increase the hole to 16 mm, we will have a tolerance range of 16 minus 10, that is 6 mm. And when the hole is of 18 mm, then we will have a tolerance range of 8 mm. So how will we include MMC and LMC in our feature control frame? So I will write that this hole has to be positioned within diametrical zone of 5 mm. Now I will put a symbol M here and what does this mean is when our dam when the diameter of the hole is 15 mm we have a tolerance range of 5 mm and I will put A, B and C. Now what does this mean is when we have a hole of 15 mm our tolerance range will be 5 mm. When the hole size increases to 16 mm it will automatically increase to 6 mm tolerance range. That is the meaning of this M here. This is the symbol of M here, maximum material condition. And when the diameter of the hole comes in as 18 mm, we have a larger tolerance range of 8 mm, 8 mm in diameter. So all of this information is included in this M modifier here. It will change the value of tolerances based on the diameter of the hole. So if the hole comes in as 15 mm, the tolerance range will be 5 mm. If the hole comes in as 16 mm, the tolerance range will be 6 mm. If the hole comes in as 18 mm, the tolerance range will be 8 mm automatically. It will change automatically. Now let us say that the hole diameter gets bigger. Let's say the hole diameter came in as 18 mm. Now if I move this hole within the 5 mm tolerance zone, I would still be left with much gap between the pin and the and the hole here. So what I will do is I will increase my tolerance zone to 8 mm. Now this is my tolerance zone. So now I have increased this tolerance zone and if I try to move this hole within this tolerance zone, you can see that if the center lies within this circular tolerance zone, my hole will always clear this pin. Now the more the tolerance we provide to the manufacturer, the more easy it becomes for him and the lesser the tolerance which we provide into the drawing, the more precise machine will be used for making that part. Now let us first discuss this order A, B and C. So first of all, I will align my datum A. So I will put this part on the datum A and I can move it along this datum plane. Then is datum plane B, that is this face here. So now I will align this face to the reference edge. And now I can move it only in this axis. And the last is datum C. So I will now align this edge here with this plane. And now the part is completely fixed and it is now clearing our pin here. So according to this, this is okay. Now let us see what A, C and B does. So first I will align this part into A plane. Now I will align this with respect to C. So C was this edge here. So I will align this edge until its two point meets. So now I can move this part along this axis. And the last is B. Now I will align this B here. And as soon as it touches this edge, I cannot move it further down. So as you can see that if the order is this one, it, it won't clear the pin. So according to this order, the part is not okay. So keep in mind the order of the datum which you define into the feature control frame. Now I will just conclude whatever we have discussed till now. So first thing is instead of defining plus and minus tolerance on the dimension, we will put a feature control frame and keep these dimensions as basic. If we define plus and minus tolerance, we will have a square tolerance zone and the hole can shift more diagonally than it can shift more in the horizontal direction or vertical direction. So one option is instead of defining 2.5 here, I will define this as let us say plus minus 1.5 so that even if the hole moves diagonally, it will clear the pin. But once I define this plus minus 1.5, it will become difficult for the manufacturer to maintain this smaller tolerance. So the lesser the tolerance, the more precise machine will be required and the part cost will be more. So instead of defining a lower tolerance value, what we will do is we will keep these as basic dimensions and define a tolerance value in a diametrical zone 
and this m means maximum material condition that means this 5 is the tolerance when the hole is 15 mm that is the when the hole is smallest when the hole gets bigger by 1 mm the tolerance zone will also get bigger by 1 mm so if the hole diameter is 16 mm this tolerance will automatically become 6 mm this is the meaning of this m modifier here that is maximum material condition and then these are our datums which will define that how will this part get assembled into this assembly here so this is how we resolve this issue with our square tolerance zone by using a diametrical tolerance zone. You can define a square tolerance zone like this, but then you have that, but then you will have to decrease the tolerance. And when you decrease the tolerance, you ultimately increase the cost of the part. So the better way is keep the tolerance mode and keep it in a diametrical zone. And the lesser the number here, the more precise machine will be required and hence the part cost will be more. So these were some considerations while making a part and how to dimension it. And in the coming sessions, we will take more such examples and you will learn GDNT in depth. So this was it in this session and in the coming sessions, you will learn more about industrial standards and we will discuss industry related problems, what problems do we face in industries and that's how we will proceed with this course. By the end of this course, you will have a great exposure how to use GDNT into drawing.